340 of the Arabian Nights. Morning now dawn. Shahrazad broke off from what she had been allowed to say. Then when it was night 340, she continued, I have heard a fortunate king that Abu Nuwas said, to hear is to obey. And then he then recited, I spent the long night of misfortune and of sleeplessness. My body worn away and filled with cares, I rose to walk to my own quarters, and after them the women's chambers. There I saw a black shirt, which was a white girl, veiled by her own hair, radiant as the full moon. Like the branch of a banshee, clothed in bashfulness, I drank the glass she had there in one gulp. Then I went up and kissed her mole. She woke from sleep, bending like a branch, when the rain falls. Then she rose, saying, What is this royal servant of our Lord? I said, A guest has come to visit you by night, hoping to shelter here till dawn. She answered joyfully, My Lord, I swear by my ears and eyes to honor you. The cleef exclaimed in wonder, it is as though you were there with us. Then he told Abu Nuwas by the hand, took Abu Nuwas by the hand and led him off to the girl. When Abu Nuwas caught sight of her, she was wearing a blue dress with a blue veil. What's with all the colors? <laughs> and being filled with admiration, he recited, Say to the lovely girl in the blue veil, By God, you are my life. Be kind to me. When his beloved treats her lover roughly, love and longing stirs in him, and he sighs. By this beauty, your white complexion now adorns. I ask you, pity the lover's heart, consumed by fire. Have mercy on me. Aid me in my love. Do not accept what fools here have to say. When Abu Nuwas had finished these lines, the girl presented wine to the caliph. Then, taking the flute in her hand, he struck a, she struck a strain and recited these lines, Will you treat another lover fairly and wrong, and wrong me, distancing me and favoring another? Were there a lover's judge, I would complain of you to him, and he might give a just ruling. If you stop me from passing by your door, I shall send greetings to you from afar. The caliph then gave orders that Abu Nuras be plied with drink until he became drunk, after which he gave him another cup, which he drank down in one gulp. While he was still gulping it, the caliph told the girl to take it from his hand and hide it, which she did between her thighs. He then drew his sword and standing by Abu Nuwas's head, he pricked him with the point. Abu Nuwas woke up to find the caliph holding a naked sword, and at once the fumes of drunkenness cleared from his head. Recite me a poem about your cup, said the caliph, or else I will cut off your head. So Abu Nuwas recited, My story is most wonderful. For the gazelle has now become a thief. She stole my wine glass when I had sipped the best of it. And then she hid it in a place for which my heart suffers distress. Out of respect I shall not give its name, as the caliph has a share in it. How did you know that? asked the caliph, adding. But I accept your lines. He then ordered Abu, Na Abu Nuwas to be given a robe of honor and a thousand dinars, after which he went away joyfully. The story is told that a certain man found himself in difficulties, being deeply in debt. He left his family and his household and wandered off aimlessly until at last on his travels he reached a city with high walls and lofty buildings. He entered it in a state of humiliation and wretchedness, oppressed by hunger and worn out by his journey. When he passed by one of his streets, he caught sight of a number of dignitaries advancing, and he went along with them until they entered what looked like a royal palace. He went in with them, and they passed through it until they came to a dignified, important-looking man seated at his far end, who appeared to be from a family of visitors and was surrounded by servants and eunuchs. When this man saw his visitors, he rose to receive them, Courtesy, but the poor man, on seeing this, was filled with 
doubt and bewilderment. End of night three forty. Arabian nights.